This morning, as many of you know, I um, just got back maybe a week ago, tomorrow I think, from a busy long week, but from Honduras, and so many of you have asked about the trip and what I learned and what I maybe didn't learn or what I, whatever I, you know, did when I was there. So this morning, I would like to share with you my adventure to Honduras. So hope that you're excited as I am about Honduras, and it's okay if you're not, but I am just honored and blown away by the experience I got to have with eight others from First United Methodist Church to go on this trip together. So there are a few pictures that um, we'll, we'll go through a little later, but first of all, um, I have a few other things that uh, I'd like to share with you this morning. So one of the blessings of information technology, just like Sandra was sharing with you this morning with the devices that we use at conference, is that the world has become a much smaller place. We can learn about what is going on in other countries almost as soon as it happens these days, can't we? And we have our little devices that are you know, our tablets and our cell phones that we just get information just like that. Gone are the days of, you know, getting a phone call from someone or reading about it in the newspaper. You can still do those sorts of things, but most people just get out their little handy dandy little devices and find out in an instant what is going on not only in our community, but around the country as well and other countries. You know, I think that's a very good thing because it means that all people across all kinds of lines get to see up close and personal how much humans, you know, human beings are alike. One of the curses of information technology, though, is that the world has become, you know, like I said, a much smaller place. That means that we also get to see up close and personal all the corruption and the cruelty and violence and hatred and injustice that is inflicting the human family, brothers and sisters. You know, there's times that I open up my my smartphone that I see stuff and I'm just like, wow. I mean, that's happening right here in Randolph County. Yes. Unfortunately, the feeling that the world is becoming a smaller place can reinforce the feeling that we have been forsaken by whatever gods we might have believed in. But I'm not sure that the answer is all that complicated. It seems to me that God's presence in this world is no more complicated than giving and receiving compassion. It is in the small acts by which we share kindness and love with our fellow human beings that we experience the true presence of God. You know, it seems to me that we open ourselves in compassion to our brothers and sisters all around us, right? We find that there is a great deal of peace and compassion that can be found in our world when we just reach out and love on somebody else. Even in the midst of suffering and injustice in this world. Precisely in the midst of all of that hatred and injustice, where can we be a true sign of God's love? in this hate-filled world. You know, I think for most of us, the reality of our world makes us tend to isolate ourselves sometimes to those around us. We want to stay in, detach ourselves from everything and everyone in our world, walking around with earbuds in our ears and our iPods and our iPhones glued to our faces. And, you know, we get comfortable in our cars even, you know, doing that as well. We're drawing to our homes to engage with the virtual world. Yes. And there we are, glued to our screens. I'm guilty of it as well. And it's no wonder we look at our world and complain and we ask, where is God in that situation that just happened? It is precisely when we open ourselves to those who are around us and allow us to experience their pain and suffering and share compassion and kindness with them is when we will experience God's presence. That's when we can be sure that God is love and peace is with us, filling us all with grace and joy. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the power, the strength, and the boldness and ability and the confidence 
to be witnesses for Jesus. So what do you think it means in our scripture that we heard this morning in Acts 1.8 when it says to go to the ends of the earth and be my witnesses, brothers and sisters? Who has been a witness recently for our Lord? You know, you can't do it on your own. You know, as I began to get ready for my trip to Honduras, this was the fifth time that I you know, went on this uh, trip, and I get the excitement of taking others with me. I love to see their reaction just when they get to see Jesus in another country. You know, see, we think that Jesus isn't there in that country. We think, well, we're going to take Jesus there. Uh -uh. God is already there in that country, brothers and sisters. We're not taking him there with us. He is already alive and at work in those people. You know, if we want to be bolder witnesses for Jesus, we need to be praying for it, obeying the Lord in every step of our way, and submitting to the will of God. You know, don't be scared of experiencing God. Don't be scared of being a witness for Him either. Jesus wants us to finish what we began. He came to the disciples, He taught them, and worked with them. He then died on the cross and rose again from the dead. But before He ascended into heaven, He gave them and us the commission to help to convert the world. And he will not ask us to do the impossible. He promises us to be with us each and every step of the way. You know, as I embarked on my journey, start going through that, the pictures. There. I'm not going to explain every one of them to you, but we uh, arrived bright and early on a Monday morning at 4 a.m. at the Raleigh Airport, excited as all get out to go and serve in, the, in God's name. Most, none of them except one person had been to another country to do mission work before. And the only person that had been was Miss Judy, uh, Judy Ward. And for those of you who know, uh, Judy and Felix continue to lift Felix up in your prayers. Um, it's um, not looking good right now. So lift uh, Judy and Felix up in your prayers as um, God continues to, to be with them and surround them with his love. So we set out, and uh, you can keep scrolling, um, and we got to work in children's homes. You know, you don't hear a lot about children's homes here in this area, do you? How many of you know where, where there is a children's home at in North Carolina? Anybody? A few of you do. And where is it at? There is one in Winston-Salem that I know of. And also, I've heard that there is somebody in Thomasville as well. Are there others that you know of? Middlesex. What's that? Middlesex. Middlesex, North Carolina. Okay. But, you know, it's not something that you hear a lot about here in this area. But in Honduras, I have worked with over 20 children's homes. And so we got the uh, first day, um, we arrived into camp, um, Camp Jerusalem. Excuse me. And it is a camp that is in the mountains of Honduras, in Peña Blanca. And Peña Blanca is a very small town. Uh, and has a Camp Jerusalem that is run by a church congregation that is in Honduras that takes care of the camp. So our first experience in a children's home was kind of a day, of a day center for special needs children. And these children had Down syndrome. And the children would come in, uh, they would range from babies up to the age of 21, 22 years old. And each day the children would come in and learn and they would do hands-on activities with the children to help with their fine motor skills and get them ready for, uh, to, you know, to begin uh, an adult and working with other kids in the schools. So this was actually, so the ch older children came in first um, and they go to school first and then come into the day center. So they start with babies, elementary, middle school, high school students. And so... While we were there, we were actually putting together these little ball, I call them ball um, equipments. And so they take the ball in their hand and they put it down the PC, uh, PVC pipe. And so it comes out the bottom and you know, they catch it at the bottom and it works with their hand and motor skills um, and eye coordination, helping them to be able to you know, work their hands. 
And so there are seven to eight teachers there in this program that take care of the kids and you know, do artwork with them, they uh, teach them their ABCs, and they um, have a professor, they're called pre professora, or pre professor, um, and you know, it's basically a professor or a teacher. And um, you can keep scrolling through the pictures. And um, I guess you mix them up a little bit in yours, it's okay. But anyway, so you'll see more pictures as we're scrolling through. Um, but anyways, so this is uh, the waterfall. We had one day where we got to um, go out and enjoy ourselves and do a fun adventure uh, in Honduras. And so we had the opportunity to go uh, to a waterfall and zip line across the waterfall and go actually into a hike inside the waterfall with the water coming down and it was very, very, very fast. And as you can see as you're scrolling through the pictures, um, this was a, the camp that we stayed at, bedroom, bathroom. That's Camp Jerusalem, the camp that we stayed at. There were a group of uh, 20, um, 29 of us uh, between, there were another church from Rocky Mountain and another church in Mooresville, North Carolina. Um, okay, we're going to stop here for a second. So this is another children's home that we got to <clears throat> work with. So this children's home is Amor y Vida, which stands for what? Does anybody know in Espanol? Love and life. Love and life. And so these children range from babies up to 21 years old. And each child that is in this orphanage is infected with HIV. And so you can imagine, you know, things have, you know, progressed and gotten better, um, you know, with technology and, and you know, medicines and whatnot for uh, those that are infected with HIV. But of course, you know, it's still difficult in um, Honduras for them to get the medicines and the proper care that they need. But the children's, uh, the children's home director shared her story with us about when she first started in this orphanage seven years ago that those children did not believe in God. Those children doubted that there was a God. One young man said, well, if there's a God, then why did he give me this disease? So through the work that she has done with her staff, she's helped the children to see that there is a God in this world, and that God loves each and every one of them. You see, most of the children that are in those homes have parents that didn't, you know, care for them, that didn't want them, that maybe, you know, had, you know, of course, HIV themselves and just maybe left them on the street somewhere or left them in an abandoned house or left them by the dumpster. These children shared with us that they didn't believe in God because people were mean to them and rejected them because they had this disease. And nobody liked them because of it. You see, do you think that sometimes we disassociate ourselves with people who are different than us? Those that don't look like us, that don't act like us, that say things about that person and that person and this person? Mm. You know, wow. You know that those things happen there as well. Yeah. Two of the students that are there in the orphanage are in college. One who will graduate with a music degree, as you see, that's playing the violin for us there. And one that will graduate this upcoming year as a lawyer in that town. Brothers and sisters, God can use you. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life or what the past has been about. God can use anybody and everybody. You just have to be willing and open and obedient to his call what he wants to do in our life. Continue I don't know what's coming up next. So as you can see, we, uh, we're not sitting
in there to really do any work. <clears throat> we did a little work, of course, at the first, um, it's called Enthragar, and that is the place that we made the little ball drop sort of things. Uh, but of course, we were sent there to just build relationships. The coolest thing is that when I go back, I love to see the children that I've seen before. And when they run up to you and just give you a big hug, and a smile on their face, they are happy to see you. So this is a young man, um, <clears throat> his name is Levi, and on Saturday while we were there, we got to participate in what they called Undia, and in, uh, in English that means one day. One day where all of the children's homes get to come together and just have a big old field day. Some of you probably remember field day, don't you? You remember what? Jump ropes, soccer balls, basketballs, footballs. Water balloons, maybe? And so that is what happened on this one day where 10 children's homes came together to have one day playing together and seeing others who were just like me as well. So we got to have breakfast with them, lunch, and got to just be crazy and wild and fun. And this kid in particular, I met Three years ago, uh, 2016 was my last trip that I got to make to Honduras. But this young man remembered me and ran up to me as soon as he saw me and says, I love you. I missed you. Where you been? And that's what it's all about. So... Of course, you know, there are uh, children that are in the um, Amori Vida, the uh, children's home that all the children uh, have HIV, that, of course, uh, we met some, that a young girl who is blind, she can't, of course, see anybody. We met someone that was deaf and mute, who can't read, but yet they are so happy to be alive. So this is uh, the Undia day where um, we ended the day with worship, uh, with the craft, and then we closed uh, with a worship service with the children. Oh, that's all the pictures that we have. So, if you're interested in learning more information about any kind of mission trip, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. But, you know, I, I think about us here at St. Luke. You know, we've it's been a year together. Isn't that crazy how time flies? But maybe what God is calling us to do as God's church to go out into the world and to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I wonder what it would look like. I wonder what it would look like if we did a new idea here on our church grounds or in the local park. It didn't have to be here at the church. I wonder what it would look like when all of God's children, red, yellow, black, and white, are really precious in His sight and do something together. I wonder what it would be like if we truly, truly went out and were the hands and feet of Christ in this world. You know, some people have asked why I go to Honduras or I was Africa last summer. They asked me, well, why do you go there when there's plenty of work to be done right here? Well, are you doing anything about it? <laughs> there is work to be done. There's so many mission opportunities for us to serve in the, right here in Asheboro. But I feel Christ is calling me to much bigger. And I don't know what that is. But I pray each and every day that God will continue to reveal what it is that God wants to reveal to me through my mission. And of course, I wanted to bring one of those children back home with me. But I hope that you'll join me in prayer for the mission.
mission of the church. I hope that she'll join me in prayer for what God wants to do with us here in St. Luke. I don't think that God's finished with us yet. There's still plenty of work to do. But are we willing and ready and able to say, here I am, Lord. Go. I will go where you send me. It doesn't mean it has to be in another country. It can be right here in our community. Maybe it's dinner church, or maybe God wants to take what we do on Fridays and make it bigger somehow. I don't know what it is. But I hope that you'll join me in prayer. And being open and listening <coughs> to God's voice. And to go where it is that God wants to send us. You know, yesterday we got to celebrate a life. A life that was well lived for God. A servant of the one true king. A servant that touched the lives of probably, oh my goodness, maybe over a thousand children and her time frame that she, time frame that she was a teacher. Not only in public schools, but also at St. Luke. I believe that it was her mission, Miss Julia's mission, just to love each child of God. Don't you think that she loved each of God's children, Amen. no matter what? Amen. Red, yellow, black, and white, they all were precious in Miss Julia's sight. Yes. <clears throat> what is your mission? What is God calling? I don't know what it is. But my hope and my prayer is that together we can figure it out. Together we can work together for all of God's children. And to be the hands and feet of God and everything comes. Work's not done yet. Still plenty of things to do. So what it is? What is it? Friends, if there's something that God is calling you to do, God will equip you to do it. Someone shared with me that they have a new job. And I think they were a little scared. A little nervous about this job. But I don't. You know what? If God has called you to this, God's going to bring you through it. God's going to equip you each and every step of your way to be the best that you can be in that job. So if there's something this morning that you just need to bring to the altar that's maybe stepping in your way, of being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Something that's stepping in your way from doing what God wants you to do in your mission. Be calm this morning and lay it down at the altar. For Christ wants to take it away from you. He wants to carry it with Him. This morning I come broken. I come this morning sad and upset. I come this morning to the altar to lay it down. Lay it down before the Lord. Something that holds me back sometimes from doing what God wants me to do is my own self. And feeling unequipped from doing it. Sometimes it's people that hold me back from doing what God calls me to do. So I don't know what it is for you, brothers and sisters. But come this morning. Knowing that you can lay it down at the feet 
so Jesus. He can take it off of you and bury it. And it's my prayer that you come to know maybe what your mission is for the Lord. Come knowing that you are loved. Come knowing that you are forgiven. And come knowing that Christ is still working.